Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel. And uh, one of the things that, you know, gets here all the time, and I see it today in some comments and regularly here, is um, always is Microsoft listening to um, its users. And the problem is very, very complex in a way, as it could also be simple. Windows itself is a team, but everything that goes around it is different teams working. So if you look at Windows 11, that's one team that was working on that project. Thing is, we continue and we talked about the mail app. I talked about, you know, how we had fine mail email apps in the past. Uh, Outlook Express was an example or Windows Live Mail. Things degraded over time, and the problem is, is that's one team that was changed into another theme. So when Outlook Express came out, the team that made that was not the same team that made Windows Live Mail. So everybody had a different vision of what mail should be, and nobody looks at what the mail apps are already and what people like. And this is a big problem with Microsoft. So every time you see something pop up that is new, a mail app. Uh, it could be, you know, the widgets, the widgets. That's that's not Windows team. That's There's a team actually working on widgets. Um, you know, there's a team working on File Explorer. And we saw, of course, the bad idea of having some ad in it to try to promote some of Microsoft's services and products. Uh, we see, you know, the... Microsoft Store, we see the apps that come through there, uh, some of them from Microsoft. Problem is, always the same. It's different teams not really looking at what's out there, what used to be out there, what could um, you know, be a good idea, and, and not talking to each other. And it's giving us a system that has a different feel and a different, you know, when we talk about inconsistencies within Windows, one of the biggest problems with that is is that it's the mail app will have a team working on it, but they're not going to actually uh, look at Windows and say, oh, what's the font that you're using and what's the size and what, you know, so that we actually align all of that with you guys. And the thing is, um, yeah, the problem is that it just doesn't really go well. And we get different experiences with different apps. We get different experiences at different parts. Microsoft Edge team, you know, has its own experience and its own way of going forward. And we get a system that is unfortunately disconnected here and there because too many people are working on too many projects and not talking to each other about how all of this is to be centralized and unified in one way. Um, you know, these teams should be all following a central idea that is guiding them into, here's what w the basics of Windows are, and we need to have apps that follow the same rules. Instead, we're having a million people working on different things that don't have to follow any rules and just have to be there and they pop up and we look at it and we're like, whoa, this this is not what I wanted. And that is, unfortunately, a big problem. Um, there were discussions about how the Windows Insider team, um, what actually they do, uh, which was very interesting because a lot of people say, well, you know, it appears in the Insiders, why is it that? Well, you know, the Insider team doesn't really do much except just release insider builds. They don't have a decision uh, taking in there pretty much. What happens is that they actually parse through all the comments, all the things that's happening in the feedback hub. You know, people are complaining through the feedback hub. That's where you should complain, by the way, if you have something that annoys you. What happens there? People complain here. People will, you know, um, look at or report a problem, suggest a feature, whatever. Uh, what's going to happen? What happens is that they look at it, but it's not the insider 
team that necessarily does anything about this. It's some other team. For example, the Windows Insider team is a team that actually is for the Windows Insider program. That's what they manage. But when something, for example, the File Explorer crashes, they have to send that to the team that works on the File Explorer and saying, well, you know, the file, file Explorer is crashing in the latest build, so I don't know what's happening. And they get a new File Explorer through that, and all of that comes together within Windows. This is where listening to users gets complicated because there definitely are some people that want to listen in. There's definitely some people that are like, yeah, you know, people don't like this or that. But from the reporting to people noticing to the actual action of changing something, it gets super complicated. And I think Microsoft, this is where they are having a huge problem right now. Communications between everybody isn't good. And that's making it very difficult to follow or change things along. That is something that will be difficult to fix also in the future. And with the result that they could be in the future annoying more and more the user, which is not a great idea, you know. Uh, the more you'll annoy people, the more people will feel like maybe they want to move away from um, you know, a Windows PC into something else at some point. And that's something else, depending on who you are, is different things. Um, you know, I see Mac computers. Mac is 100 million times worse. So every time I see somebody say, well, you know, Mac is uh, the way to go, it's like, no, they're worse. They're worse than Microsoft in many aspects. Um, and, you know, Linux is not an option for most people. It is for an enthusiast that knows what he's doing. Uh, people that say, well, you know, I don't understand people not going to Linux. They're not going to Linux. They're going to go to an iPad, which is a million times easier for them to use and do stuff than having a Linux PC that they don't know how to install it. The Linux distros don't always install well. When they do, some work well, but they're so different than Windows that people just, you know, imagine Windows 11, people are lost from Windows 10, and I don't see personally a lot of difference. There's differences in menus and stuff, but I do see a lot of those comments. People are like, you know, I'm, I'm still adjusting myself to learning Windows 11. Imagine learning Linux when you're at that level. It's impossible. That's not the way it works. Plus, none of the apps that the people want will actually be available. That's the other thing that people don't understand with Linux. Oh, yeah, well, you know, Linux is great. Linux is great, yeah. Well, people are going to go find that app that they want, and it's like, well, there's doesn't exist. So this is crappy. This will always be like that. And that's why Linux is not uh, a, you know, I'm not bashing Linux. I'm just telling you the truth that Linux is not an alternative for no one except an enthusiast that loves PCs and wants to play with other operating systems and knows what he's doing. So they're moving away from it in other ways. I don't think they're moving away from it for, with a Mac either because there's no shift in numbers. Like I said, if they move away, they'll move away to... A tablet could be an iPad, could be, you know, a Chromebook. They'll be moving away with other stuff that that is not a PC in the end. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and thank you for watching.